Hi everyone. Today we're on board a Conquest X Cray fishing vessel. This vessel is currently having a few repairs done to it and one of the big ticket items that really needed to be done was to remove the High Nautics uh, engine control system which are a hydraulic fluid system and replace them with something a lot more reliable. So what we're going to do is here's a little video beforehand of the High Nautics control systems. So you can see here we've got this is one of three stations. This one here is on the back deck. Very unreliable systems on this particular vessel, unfortunately, meaning that at any point in time, the engine would either not return to idle or otherwise the, en the gearbox would be stuck in gear and not return to neutral. So quite a dangerous situation to find yourself in. So reliability is the reason behind making the changeover from the high Nordics across to the Flexball systems. As I take you here into the cabin, you can see we have a second setup here. Now, to run you through, on these systems here, what we have is two different levers here. One controls the gear actuation for the three positions, forward, neutral, and reverse, and the second lever controls your throttles. So all of these here will be replaced with the brand new flex balls. What I'll do is I'll just take you up the top as well, and I'm around, and this one here unfortunately you can see due to the weather it's actually had the handles broken off of it twice so again another good reason to replace it is just knowing that you're not going to end up with a handle in your hand when you go to grab neutral the flexible systems are ip68 rated and we can provide adaption plates to pick up the exact mounting bolt pattern for the high nautic so it's a nice easy bolt in arrangement to make life easy what i'll do now is i'll take you down into the engine room and show you the high nautic servos all right so here we are in the engine room of this uh, x cray fishing vessel the engine in this is a i'll just zoom out a bit a brand new fiat fpt cursor 13 marine engine this one here has been set at 650 horsepower, down from the available 815. These are a electronically controlled engine. You can see the Bosch ECU just there. However, they still do have the option of mechanical potentiometer. So tucked down here, this is the high nautics actuator there, connecting through to the electronic potentiometer just tucked in there. Excuse the darkness here. Now, unfortunately, that these pressurized lines running through here do have a tendency to leak, which can therefore mean that you don't end up with response on the slave cylinder here. Therefore, you don't end up with correct response either for increase or decrease of throttle of RPM. What we'll end up doing with the flex ball system, because the engine's electronic, we're going to change the input and we're going to turn it into a completely electronic input for this engine which allows you to have the potentiometer still fitted as a backup, but everything feeding in will be through a CAN bus system connected into the engine harness. Now, Flexball are very good at offering different solutions, so we can offer solutions for most manufacturers of engines who either use 0.5 to 4.5 volt input, uh, 4 to 20 milliamp, a PWM input, or any other thing that is required, Flexball can offer a solution to adapt in most cases. Uh, as I said, CAN bus is always a nice easy one, which is the signal that the FPT motors take. I'll quickly roll around here to the front of the engine. And here, yeah. so here we have the canister, the pressurized high, uh, high nautic canister, which provides the fluid up and down. So you can see that she is in quite poor shape. Of course, this is no longer required. We will replace this with the actuator box from Flexball. The system that's being used here is the 4500-EM12. So the 4500 being the system, the first E representing the fact that the engine is having an electronic input. The M, however, swing back around, refers to the fact that we have a mechanical gearbox. So tucked down here, you can see we have the mechanical actuator there and the high nautic slave there cylinder just there so we will still run a short morse cable from wherever the actuator box is mounted probably up the front of the engine there uh, with a short morse cable for controlling forward neutral and reverse 
Whereas, as I said, the electronic side of things for the throttle is going to be input through the CAN bus system. From there, it's a nice easy daisy chain arrangement with 10 meter extension harnesses from the actuator box up to the first and second stations, as this client's only electing to go for two different throttle stations. So here is another look at the gearbox actuation. This is an old twin disc gearbox. Here you see we have the three position actuator for forward, neutral and reverse. Here is the slave cylinder for the high nordics. Now this will all go, including these pressurized hydraulic lines. Instead, we'll have a Morse cable that connects in here through a bracket, which goes all the way back to the actuator box located probably at the front of the engine room. And that will allow us to control the three positions for forward, neutral and reverse, very easily programmable, and allow us to connect up, or anyone to connect up anywhere in the world uh, with ease. It does not require any specific information. Uh, to be able to set the stroke on a new flexible system.